Engine, paydeck and fuel are part of a quite complex ecosystem within an aircraft. Uh, we do not have time to get into the mathematics and modeling techniques in this episode of In the Hangar, but rest assured, at some point we will be making a monographic on how this model was approached and came along. For the time being, I'm going to briefly show you and discuss on where we are, what issues are being tackled as we speak, and wrap up with some next steps and plans for the future. Okay? All right, so let's go. I'm, I'm right here standing in the uh, runway at Lima Echo Romeo Sierra, ready for takeoff. And the first thing I'd like to show you is um, how we maintain 100% engine independence. As you can see, I'm moving the throttle on engine number two, and all the parameters are uh, moving accordingly. And uh, if we do the same for engine number one, you'll see the same behavior, all right? Totally independent from one another. This is crucial not only for normal operations, but also it allows for future abnormal ops, uh, simulation of individual engine fail scenarios, engine wear and along, etc. Of course, uh, from an overall team perspective, this also means we have kind of a template to build other aircraft with more than two engines if needed in the future, which is pretty cool. Um, another particular aspect of engine independence is engine imbalance. Engine imbalance is a natural characteristic of uh, engines not being exactly equal. What we've done so far is to randomize engine imbalance on fuel flow, uh, EGT and N2, as you can see, at levels we've seen and experienced in real life. Of course, you will always see N1 uh, being at the same uh, level, since the onboard computer, the FADEC, balances engine behavior to obtain the same thrust out of both engines. Okay. At some point on the roadmap, um, the initial imbalance will be set for an aircraft's uh, given registration and um, an increased imbalance will be simulated with engine wear and engine cycle. Okay. All right, let's move into the two main engine parameters, uh, the, um, and the, the uh, high pass fan and the low pass turbine um, uh, rotational speeds, N1 and N2. The first thing to notice is that they are uh, both within uh, the within standards at sea level and static conditions. Um, but let me show you uh, thrust, which is also a very uh, relevant um, um, uh, indicator. Um, thrust, it's uh, around uh, 1,580 pounds, which is what's supposed to be for the LIB 1A26, okay? Uh, this is one of, uh, of the key elements uh, when, when we are at idle. Um, but there is another key uh, parameter uh, that it's uh, what we call breakaway uh, thrust. That's the thrust you need to uh, start moving the aircraft uh, uh, with a certain weight. Um, in this case, uh, breakaway thrust is around 3,900 pounds per engine. And, uh, well, if I take out the parking brake and give a little, uh, a little throttle, Okay, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10% throttle. As you can see, thrust is starting to build up and we're starting to move. At 3,600, 3,700 pounds, we are uh, starting to move. I bring down to idle again the throttle and uh, the aircraft uh, keeps moving as it's supposed to. Okay, so this is within real life um, specs right now. Okay, let me put on parking brakes again. All right, there we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to test is uh, full power static thrust, which for the LIB 1A26 is 27,120 pounds. Okay, I will, uh, I will go on toga power uh, to check on that thrust. Um, uh, the, the, the thing with the new update is that, uh, you know, the uh, master warning, the master alarm turns on and it's impossible to turn off. So I'll just have to uh, resync the aircraft after th after this test but uh, this is just to show you that the um, the thrust curves are right within specs so if I go full toga right now there we have the, the the master alarm that I cannot turn off as you can see full thrust per engine is very very close to 27,000 pounds and maybe a little tweaking uh, has to be done to get to uh, 27,120 pounds but it's uh, pretty much um, the right, um, the right um, thrust uh, at toga power. Also, take into um, uh, notice uh, the EGT, which is uh, again within specs, and fuel flow, also within specs. Okay, let me just go back down, and 
try to turn these off. Okay, so I did have to resync the aircraft due to the uh, master alarm. Um, but the next thing I wanted to point out was um, how these engine parameters all behave uh, with um, uh, changing environmental conditions such as temperature, pressure, uh, and, and that translates to uh, altitude and speed. Um, and uh, that's how it's supposed to be in real life. So if, for example, we deviate from ISA conditions on temperature, uh, you can see that the engine parameters are moving according to those new conditions. So the engine is adapting to those uh, environmental conditions. And of course, this happens at uh, different altitudes, different speeds as well. Okay, This is how it's supposed to behave in real life. And we have this taking, taken care of uh, right now. Okay, so um, enough with the static part. Uh, let's move into... Um, and, and, and let's be ready for takeoff roll. Um, one of the key things we need to take into account is that engine parameters are not the only thing to work uh, on for uh, engine fidelity. Uh, we need to understand engine dynamic behavior and transient response as well. And uh, for example, uh, N1 and N2 have been already taken care of, uh, but uh, for EGT and fuel flow, we need to uh, we need to work on those uh, on those rates on those um, transients. Okay. Um, so what I'll do uh, now is I'm going to turn off parking brakes. I'm going to start the takeoff roll, which uh, will um, I will accelerate both engines to around 50% and one. Wait for both to balance and then move to toga power. Okay. Uh, what we should see in reality is the following transient response. From idle to 50%, it takes about seven seconds. And then from 50% to toga, it takes about two seconds. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm gonna put the chronometer and uh, I'm gonna also tell you it's gonna, things are gonna happen uh, as you can expect, and the things are gonna happen quite fast. But um, I want to, um, I want you to also take a look at what happens with, uh, with EGT, because when you go from idle to 50%, uh, there's going to be kind of a dumping of uh, temperature until it uh, picks up and then it spools up again. Um, this is what actually happens also in real life. Uh, this is uh, the uh, real behavior of uh, the exhaust gas temperature. Okay, so things are going to happen, as I say, things are going to happen very fast, but take a look at it. Okay, so let's start uh, taking out parking brakes. Okay, um, let me turn on the um, the chronometer and spool up 50%. Okay, let's go 50%. Okay, four, five, six, seven, eight. Between seven and eight, and then toga power. Okay, which it's been roughly two seconds. Okay, and um, and this is it. Uh, all engine parameters are as they are supposed to while uh, while we're rolling down the, the runway and um, okay let me just go ahead and just climb okay all right and I think uh, you know from a from a static and a takeoff roll point of view I think we're done uh, let's go a little higher and um, and then let's see how the engine behaves at uh, certain altitudes and speeds. Finally, I wanted to show you how uh, realistic our values are um, cruising at uh, 20,000 feet and 260 knots. Uh, weight on board right now, it's uh, very close to 60,000 kilograms and um, I have an, an excerpt of the FCOM over here to show you, you know, some of the values that uh, uh, so we can compare with the, what the aircraft is giving us. As you can see, N1 is supposed to be 66%, we are uh, at 65%, and fuel flow, uh, it's supposed to be 948 kilograms per hour, and we are at 920 kilograms per hour. I mean, and these are maximums at MCT. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, climb. We are with our thrust right now, and uh, but the, the values are pretty close to uh, to reality. Um, when we have the final flight model and we have the final uh, engine model and everything, you know, 
uh, gets together, uh, we're going to probably see uh, very, very close to reality values everywhere around. Uh, EGT is not shown over here, but EGT is uh, also very realistic. Uh, we do have some data and we have compared with CFM data, but you know, at some point I will, uh, as I said at the beginning, I will make a monographic on, on how we uh, how we built the engine model um, and um, and what we've done. Uh, next steps, there is a, a huge list of things that uh, we need to be doing. Of course, uh, we do have a new fuel flow model and that means that um, uh, we need to also um, tweak the fuel consumption um, uh, the fuel consumption of the, of the aircraft, which right now is uh, burning fuel at a very, very high rate compared to, um, uh, to real life. Um, we need to work also on the startup and uh, shutdown procedures uh, for the engine. Um, uh, we have to implement thrust limits. Uh, we need to continue with uh, variable transients uh, for, for fuel flow and, and EGT. And, uh, you know, I, again, and the idea is to make it as realistic as possible. So uh, we will also implement uh, pr probably engine wear and engine cycle uh, maintenance and, and things like that in the future. Okay. As I said, the pipeline is quite high. Um, it's quite big and, uh, and we're working on it. Uh, but uh, I believe we do have um, a reasonable model uh, to be implemented in a very, uh, very near uh, stable release of uh, of the fly-by-wire aircraft. Uh, so, so stay put. And anything you need, any any questions, uh, please uh, let me know.